Well, hello everyone, and welcome to the Hungara Ring in Hungary for Season 4, Round 11 of my F1 2012 career mode. I am Love Spuds, and today we need to finish first, as is always the target in races, obviously, especially in a McLaren in 2012, not 2013. <laughs> but, um, yes, here we are in Q3. It looks like it's trying to rain, but it's 0% uh, chance of rain, and it actually kept its word as well, which I'm quite happy about, so no danger of that. There is like a 26% chance of rain in the race, so I expect it to uh, piss down rain from the offset. <laughs> but um, yeah, I know what happens there, but uh, you'll wait, you'll, uh, you'll see that soon. Already with the waffle. This is great, 29 seconds in. Um, no, I mean 20, <laughs> a minute in, but 29 seconds was the first sector time there. Uh, I only have to qualify fourth, and I don't know what the bloody hell is going on with the qualifying in this game sometimes, because I actually had Charles Peake in Q3 set uh, a 121, uh, 5, something along those lines. So I was thinking, oh, the pole time's going to be like a bloody 120 or 119 even. Which is the sort of times that are actually in Q2. The fastest time in Q2 is a 119. So I thought, oh my god, I've got to go and try and get a 118 here. And so I thought the 121.7 wasn't enough. So I was going to go out for another lap, but no. I actually end up 7 tenths faster with a 121.7. What the freaking balls is going on? The track conditions didn't change, it was still cloudy, so it's not as if the track was hotter in Q2. Yet the AI just seemed to set a time that's a hell of a lot slower than Q2. I just find that bloody strange. I don't know about you, but there we go, that's how I got pole. And I really wasn't expecting to get pole, to be honest, considering my bogey sector on this track is sector 2. Sector 1 and 3? I can keep up with the AI, maybe even be, be slightly faster than in Sector 1. For Sector 2, uh, I can be up to a second slower most of the time, so... Excuse me if I find that a bit weird, <laughs> that I managed to get pole. But, um... So that actually gives us a chance of winning the race. Whether I actually managed to or not is another matter. It's going to be a bit hard to keep her... Uh, someone like Raikkonen behind, that's for sure, and Schumacher, who does tend to do quite well uh, sometimes. He just comes out of nowhere and just blitzes everything. Um, haven't quite seen anything of Rosberg and Grosjean yet in this race. I, I do know where they finished, I think. Just going to have to check those results at the end. But they're definitely not in the top three, that's for sure. Going around to complete lap one in the last few corners now. And that wasn't that wasn't actually a bad first lap. Um, as first laps go. Do have a last little train behind me. Someone obviously got in trouble at the back there on his own. Don't know who that was. So you go, start start going to start lap two. I've already pulled out uh, just over a second gap to Raikkonen, so I should be out of DRS range. But knowing me, things can go wrong. And today is no exception. But do I fuck it up sooner rather than later? And there you go, sooner. <laughs> and that's completely buggered everything up. Raikkonen's got past and Schumacher's going to get past as well. I was going to try and make a move on him around the chicane, but I wasn't quite expecting him to go that wide. And he's bounced over the kerb, which is quite interesting. <laughs> Never seen that happen before. Looks pretty cool in replay as well, so that might be in the montage at the end of the season. Oh, blimey, I forgot about the montage, yeah. I'm going to be a bit pushed for time. This time around, because I'm moving a house at the end of the month, so... No, I should be alright. My internet's being cut off on the 1st of August, so as long as I get everything done by then, <laughs> it should be fine. Uh, yeah. So there you go, I'm down to third through uh, a silly mistake, getting on the power too early on the kerbs. 
which meant I nearly span, but I kept control of it. Didn't go into the barriers at least. But it does mean I am under threat from Kobayashi and I'm making mistakes left, right, and centre in terms of going around the corners. So yeah, Kobayashi's up in fourth. It's quite interesting to see. I haven't seen a Sauber for a little while. I haven't seen Kobayashi for a little while. He's, he's appeared in the last few races uh, along with Perez now and then, but. Oh, there's Rosberg set fastest lap. 1, 2, 3, 1. See, my fastest lap isn't going to be very near that at all. Thanks to the second sector, um, I'm definitely not going to set the fastest lap. It's this section I just have trouble with, the chicane, for starters. I, don't, I never can be as fast as them coming out of it. And then I lose bits of time on these like, twisty sections as well. So I ended up going with a setup that had more downforce this time around. Um, just to at least have some sort of chance of maybe keeping up with someone or overtaking someone if the need should arise. But I'm still not quite fast enough, so hey-ho. Never mind. It's just one of those things. You can't be an uh, expert at every single track. Unless you're an actual Formula 1 driver, I suppose. But <laughs> still, there you go. So my goal to get today is to uh, actually hang on to third place and get a podium because Schumacher and Raikkonen are just going to go off and have their own race. And I'm going to be the head of a train once it forms up properly. At least it's good to see Jensen though in a top 10 again, which is pretty good. And he doesn't seem that far off. He looks like he's in about 6th or 7th at the moment. I hope he can move up a few places. Might even be able to if uh, I hold up the traffic enough. But I have to say, I'm driving this track better than I did last season. Last season I had quite a low downfall setup. Um, ignore that. Going wide. Whenever I say I'm driving quite well, I go off and do something stupid. But, um, yeah, if it, the car feels a lot better than last last season, that's for sure. Not because it's a different car, because it's a different setup. I've got a bit more downforce and I can be a bit more confident throwing it into the corners. Rather than with the low downforce, I had to go in at a snail's pace and that really did cost me quite a bit of time. The only time I could make up was on the straights, but that wasn't even that much. But there you go. So, I f I, in other news, I finally got a dislike on my videos for the first time in a few months. <laughs> It's quite an achievement, but to be fair, the commentary on my last video was a bit shit, um, by my standards. Uh, Germany, not the Racer 7 video, the last Formula 1 video. And so yeah, that's fine. I actually can't quite welcome dislikes, um, but I would like to know what specifically people did dislike about the video. If it was my gameplay, or my commentary, or my... Topics of discussion or whatever. The lack of having something to say sometimes. I don't know. But I would like to know so I could improve it for the future. Because, um. <clears throat> because if I don't know, then I can't do anything about it, can I? But whatever. Each is their own. And, uh. Definitely don't be worried about hurting my feelings because I don't. <laughs> it's bad to say that I don't give a crap, but. <laughs> I kind of don't. But I will take on board any criticisms and comments you guys may have. Whether or not I agree with them is a different matter. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. There you go. That's all I have to say on that one. Uh, there should be some news out today. It probably will be out by the time this video goes up. Um, Monday the 15th of July. There should be some news about the upcoming... F1 2013 game. There was a sneak peek of a picture of the um, the sort of side cases of the games where the, that the discs are contained in. It said, um, you know, and you had a sliver of the cover art on it, and you had the F1 2013 name and all that. But what the only surprise I saw with that is the fact that one of them had um, sort of 
what I think is limited edition um, on one of the boxes so I could say I'm a little bit disappointed that they buy into this whole limited edition bullshit but it will be interesting to see what the hell that entails I mean it could be like extras and things but <laughs> what kind of extras would that be I mean you know, I'm just going to have to wait until see what happens today, I suppose. See if there's any information whatsoever, because there's meant to be some info out today. According to uh, Steve Hood, the creative director. So, we'll just have to see what comes off today, and if there's possibly a video as well. A little bit of a teaser trailer at the very least. Or I'd like to see at least something. Because it's been a little while now. You still got those silly people thinking the game wasn't going to be released because they didn't hear anything before now. And what's even worse is the people thinking it was going to be released today. I mean, what what F1 game comes out without, you know, just what F1 game comes out about being released before anyone knowing about it? You know, not just suddenly going to say, oh, it's, uh, by the way, it's uh, available for the for purchase. They're not going to do that, are they? It's going to come out in September as they usually do. And, you know, you've got to give it, you've got to give them a chance to get pre-orders in. It's kind of a silly assumption by some people, but, you know, never mind. But there you go, I'd be looking forward to seeing something. Um, and if there's anything worthy of talking about, then I'll probably talk about it in tomorrow's video, as long as I can get one up tomorrow. See, so yeah, that should be interesting. Yeah, in F1 in general, let's, uh, let's have a look at this pit stop. At least I'm the only one in here, so I shouldn't be held up. 3.6 seconds. Now you just have a half decent outlap. In 15th at the moment. Hopefully, there. Uh, they won't get too far ahead. But they do say that you do have a bit of an advantage going into the pits first. At least your tyres will be warmed up as well. But no, in the AI they'll probably get a bit of a lead in Sector 2. On the uh, sort of, uh, softer, faster tyre as well. So we'll just see when we come back around to the start finish straight. I was going to say, uh, yeah, generally in F1, there's not a hell of a lot going on. Still, still uh, running up to the young driver's test in a few days' time. Not much information that I have found yet about it, apart from Kimi Raikkonen definitely being in the young driver test for one of the days. I mean, assume. Ooh, a few of the others will be, apart from Mercedes, of course. Which now, you know, with their tyre test scandal thingamajig, you know, being pointless, and now they have been <laughs> at a disadvantage, they're probably going to be... Ooh, I don't know, will they be behind come Budapest and uh, Spa? It'll be interesting to see. Now they change the construction of the tyres, following the calamities at the British Grand Prix. But, well, we'll see. We'll see what happens. But yeah, I came round and I'm actually behind Maldonado, so I really need to overtake him straight away. I'm really determined to stay on the back of him. I really don't want to lose him in Sector 2, because if I lose him in Sector 2, then I am stuffed, and I could end up in 4th, I believe just got to uh, try and keep with him as much as possible but not get too close that I lose so much downforce on the corners. I'll try and manage this well enough but I'm doing quite well for now. As you can see he's got they always get a better run than me out of that chicane but I do kind of hang on to him around this bit and then they get really quite quick around here sometimes. Uh, but I didn't have the very good angle on that corner there, so that was my own fault. So it's encouraging that I can keep up sometimes in that sector, 
but I did do just enough to stay within the second because I need that DRS, especially with the run they get out of the final corner. So I went over the DRS detection line there. I'm going to go over the activation line now. I'm going to go straight for it. I'm going to use up all my curves. I'm going to use up my curves again just to make sure I can get that speed. Go around the outside. Oh, if I'd left that any later, I would have, went, I would have smacked into the back. But it's not over yet. I'm going to go wide. To go wide there, locking up the tyres. But I did manage to just about stay ahead. Stay ahead. I looked at the replay on that, and uh, he was actually pretty much side by side with me almost coming out of that the exit of turn one. But he backed off a bit as uh, soon as I uh, went on the uh, run down to turn two. So yeah, it was all right. Not bad move. Back up to third, which is where I wanted to be. And, yep, the rain is coming in about 10 minutes or so, I think he just said. So, yeah, the threat of rain is always there. Nice clear skies at the moment, but it will soon cloud over as I wipe the curb a little bit. Marginado gets his nose in front a little bit, but he went off wide there. I don't know if I pushed him wide, but I definitely didn't touch him, that's for sure. Oh well. As long as I got that third place, that's the closest I've come to losing that position again. It's good. All I need to do now is just keep myself in third position and I can get my ninth podium of the year. It's uh, quite a good run of podiums considering this is the 11th race. So should get some pretty decent points going on here. Looks like Jensen's moved up a little bit, I think. Don't know quite where he is. He must be in about sixth position. So we're looking to get some good constructors points, considering I don't know where the hell Rosberg is or where Grosjean is. But we will see. We see the gap to Raikkonen getting steadily bigger and bigger every sector. Which is quite annoying, but yeah, just got to live with that one, I'm afraid. So yeah, as I was saying, not much else going on in Formula One at the moment. Uh, Sky Sports so, uh, had a little article on making the case for uh, Daniel Ricciardo to replace Mark Webber next year. Just uh, you know. Getting a few bullet points and a few explanations on the things. Like saying a point in Ricardo would keep Red Bull's winning formula in place. Uh, also known as having pretty having pretty much a number one driver and a number two driver. Obviously having Vettel out front doing his own thing. Apparently he fits the age gap for Red Bull as well. In that, uh, you know, Raikkonen's 33 now. And he, he's approaching his final year, final years in Formula One, and Vettel's only got a contract to the end of 2015. So, you know, they could get Ricardo in and develop him at Red Bull, keep him there for a while, rather than having to change drivers again. If Kimi went into the seat, for example. Yeah, I doubt. I'd, out another year at Toro Rosso would be any good for Ricardo, so I think it's a make or break this year in terms of contracts. But the consensus is that we will hear something by Spa anyway, so that's only about a month or so away. Oh, well, Spa's in um, Belgium is at the end of August, I think, on the calendar because he's got summer break after Hungary, so it's going to be a while before we hear anything. Fair to say Ricardo does have some talent, most definitely, but it's hard to say when a in a in a car that was underperforming last year. But it seems to have picked up pace this year, definitely. Um you know, comparing him to his teammate, you know, Ricardo had qualifying bests of fifth and sixth this year compared to Fern's 
uh, where is it? Fern 12th, Fern qualified 12th and 6th, respectively. This is talking about qualifying and uh, qualifying at Silverstone and the Nurburgring. So he's completely blowing away his teammate, which is why he seems to be the candidate for uh, the Red Bull seat. I don't think Red Bull choose anyone else really if Raikkonen turned down the deal so I wouldn't be surprised if Ricardo did end up filling the seat but it would be nice to see another Australian up there at the front of the grid because you don't get many of them that's for sure and not to mention Ricardo would be cheaper than Raikkonen of course But yeah, anyway, I'm s I'm sort of on the fence when it comes to Ricardo. Anyway, I don't think I've seen enough yet, but I do believe he's half decent. Seems to be delivering the goods at the right times, and if he uh, performs that well under much greater pressures than that, then uh, yeah. Why not, I suppose. But anyway, back to this race. Doing alright, keeping ahead of Kobayashi there. Went a bit wide there, jumping over the curb. It's not too bad. Kobayashi's not quite been able to make any moves on me as of yet. I should be moving up to the uh, rich fuel mix soon. I'll probably be doing it uh, in a couple of corners time we'll get them to start finish straight so it's, for a minute I was, was going to say there were back markers around on the start finish straight there but no that's the, that's actually the leaders the leaders going around turn one about now there's a small train of back markers there well, there they are I don't think I'm going to catch up to them but the leaders definitely will and I'm switching up to the rich fuel mix as you can see the fastest lap by Schumacher is a 122.8 uh, now compare that to my best time, I haven't been able to break into the 123s. So you can see how much time I'm losing just in uh, Sector 2. And I'm probably losing time across the other sectors as well now. Considering the AI are pretty damn quick around here compared to me. Uh, a better driver than me could probably you know, catch up and keep up with them, but... I'm just not that great around here. This is one of my... I like... I kind of like the circuit a little bit, but I'm not really a fan of it, uh, driving it, anyway. It just doesn't seem to like me, and I don't particularly like it that much. But the circuit itself is quite an interesting circuit, I have to admit. Car trying to step out on me. That's only because I'm riding the curbs too much, though. It's all these little uh, little mistakes. I should really iron them out, but yeah, you know, I'm just not <laughs> not quite capable of that. I don't think. Uh, maybe I would do better over like 100% race distance or something. Possibly. I don't know. Would I be more consistent because I had to do more laps? Who knows? These sh these short. Um, Sprint races do definitely uh, suit uh, YouTube videos, that's for sure, because they're about half an hour in length. They take me about, what, five or six hours to upload? So that's why I can't really do anything longer, because I don't really have the time to do that. Plus the time it takes to edit the damn thing as well. And I don't think, you know, it, it, if it comes to montages as well, I, I, I really don't think the... Um, the replay system saves the whole race. I think it saves like a certain number of laps or a certain a time limit. So that would be a bit daft for the montages. At least with this one I can go through the whole race and pick out and select bits I want to see. But I might be wrong on it. I don't know. I don't know how long the uh, save file is. But uh, yeah. Whatever. 
I'm considering doing 100% races for 2013. I might only do like one or two seasons um, on the game if I'm going to do 100% races and I'm going to like edit it down into highlights. Take a bit more time, you know, rather than having to sit here and waffle about nothing sometimes. You know, have it a bit more action packed than it uh, is right now. But I don't know. I, I I'll see how I feel. It's also the question question of changing my uh, view as well, because I have been told by someone oh, I've forgotten the name of um, Super Elite Gamer. That's it. <laughs> I just about remembered that name. He did say uh, he he messaged me the other day saying um, he watched a guy racing in a league with the T-cam view, not the TV camera that I have, but the T-cam view that's more centred. Saw someone racing a league, he actually gained four tenths by changing to that view from the view I've got now. So that should be an interesting thing to test out. I will test that in private on this game and on the next game as well, just to see which one is better for me and which one may be faster as well. I'll do some comparison lap times um, with the same settings, the same setup on the same track for example one that I'm quite consistent at, maybe Silverstone or something um, I'll maybe I'll test it at some other tracks as well might even try and test it at Monaco as well see how it affects me but you'll see, we'll see what um, view I decide on in the next race not, not next race, next game when I start Hopefully making videos on that as soon as possible. You'll say it's going to be a slightly dodgy time. I might be, I might be late with my first season of F1 2013. It depends on my situation when I move house as well. Because I might be a bit uh, stuck for an internet connection. I mean, I know there's an internet connection where I'm moving to now. But it might not be very good. It might be worse than the one I've got now. Which is... Uh, some feet, I tell you that. But anyway, we're on the last lap. As you can see, it's spitting with rain, but it's not affecting the grip levels of the track. So I'm quite confident to still throw it around the track. Which is quite nice, because if I was out any longer, maybe for a couple more laps, I probably would be sliding about the place, and the AI would be absolutely fine on the rails, as usual. But it's nice that the race is ending now, lap 18. Michael Schumacher did end up getting in front of Raikkonen, taking the win, and I'm coming home for third position, the last podium slot. My ninth podium of the season, which is pretty good going, I have to say, and Jensen Button even managed to finish in fifth as well. So that's 25 points for the constructors. It's good healthy points. Margin? Margin? I don't know why I said margin. But anyway, that sort of equals what Schumacher got for Mercedes, so the gap between us and Mercedes should be about the same. Might have made gains on Lotus, though, because they only got 18 points out of that with Kimi Raikkonen. Grosjean is finishing down the order somewhere. And so is Rosberg, so they didn't get points. So it looks like we're actually going to make some sort of gain in the constructors. See, Charles Peak, this is another... He's performing well again, we've managed to get in the top 10. Not quite a podium this time, which was weird. But, uh, yeah, he's still in the top 10, scored another point. Sergio Perez was the only car to retire. In the Drivers' Championship, I'm doing very well in that. I'm actually two race wins ahead now of uh, Nico Rosberg, because he didn't score any points in that race. Grosjean didn't score any points either. So I've increased my lead quite substantially. Um, so I can basically retire from the next two races and still have a point lead. Jensen moving up to 8th there, 42 points, which is good to see. And there is the rest of the pecking order. Nothing amazing there apart from Charles Peak being on 16 points. <laughs> it's quite amazing. He does really come out of nowhere, that Mar those Marussias. But yeah, here's the Constructors' Championship. 
Mercedes still at the top, but my Vodafone McLaren Mercedes, seven points behind, still in the running, amazingly enough. And we've moved ahead of Lotus, who are just one point behind us, so still got a lot to fight for. And there's a huge gap to Ferrari and the rest of the field. So, yeah, there we go. Not oh, Marussia in eighth, yeah. It's interesting. I'm going to keep an eye on them this season, see where they end up if Pete keeps getting into the top 10. But anyway, not a bad result, not a bad result. Third is good enough for me. So, yeah, join me next time for round 12. See you then.